Welcome to this short video on jitter and jitter measurements for next generation networks. This presentation is based around the new jitter measurements for next generation networks poster and the poster is available on the Carlnex website at www.carlnexall.com. So first of all, what is jitter? You can think of jitter as the lengthening or shortening of one signal element, usually one bit time in an NRZ or binary signal. Jitter is the unwanted variation from the, the true periodicity. In clock recovery applications it's called timing jitter and jitter is a very significant and undesired factor in the design of almost all communication links. So what are the key effects of jitter? Excessive jitter impacts the ability of clock recovery circuits to recover the clock properly which can lead to missed timing inside transmission equipment when data is regenerated. When timing errors become large, bit errors are introduced leading to excessive packet loss. Now as shown in the oscilloscope traces above, jitter causes eye closure on the horizontal axis as shown on the right, and this prevents correct sampling and ultimately results in bit errors. Even if the jitter doesn't cause errors itself, it reduces the noise margin of the system and makes it more prone to errors. It may be the result of pattern dependency or due to noise sources such as thermal noise or crosstalk. However, it's, however it's caused, every system will generate some degree of mistiming and therefore has to operate in its presence. So let's talk about ITT jitter standards. There are uh, three categories of ITT standards. There are IT standards for the amount of jitter network equipment can generate and tolerate. There are ITT standards for the amount of jitter present in the network. And there are ITT standards covering the accuracy of the jitter test equipment. So the network equipment standard for SYNCHE network equipment is G8262. The network limits for SYNCHE are detailed in G8261. And the test equipment standard for SYNCHE is covered by 0.174. Now G G8251 covers the, both the network equipment and the network limits for OTN and O.173 details the OTN test equipment accuracy. So let's talk about ITT jitter measurements now. There are three types of ITU measurements, jitter measurements. The most important types, the two most important types are jitter tolerance and jitter generation. Now jitter tolerance as shown here involves applying a controlled amount of jitter from the test equipment to the network equipment input and verifying that the network equipment is able to pass the signal without the input losing lock or causing errors. Jitter generation is the other very important test and basically verifies the amount of jitter generated output of the network equipment and is often also called output jitter. Output jitter is measured with a jitter free signal at the input of the network equipment. Lastly, jitter transfer involves measuring the jitter gain of a piece of network equipment. There's normally a CAL cycle in which a known level of jitters applied and then measured in the test equipment and then the network equipment is inserted and the jitter gain is measured. So let's talk about the difference between peak-to-peak -peak and RMS jitter. Jitter is generally expressed in terms of unit intervals where a UI equals one bit time of a digital signal. It's generally expressed as peak-to-peak -peak jitter, i.e. 2 UI peak-to-peak, -peak, or root mean square jitter, for example 0.25 UI RMS. In telecoms, it's a peak jitter which causes clock recovery circuits to lose lock and for errors to occur. So telecom standards focus on peak-to-peak -peak jitter. Now the diagram above, on the right here, shows the relationship between the random jitter signal in green, the yellow square signal which is then averaged to produce the blue RMS signal, the dotted line shown there. So the peak-to-peak -peak value here is 2UI peak-to-peak, as shown in the green. But the RMS value, which is computed over the integration time, is much smaller at 0.25 UI RMS. Now this next graph, maybe explain things better, shows the relationship between the RMS and the peak-to-peak -peak values on a sinusoidal signal. The sinusoidal peak-to-peak -peak jitter is 2 UI peak-to-peak. -peak. The square signal, shown in yellow, is 1 UI peak-to-peak. -peak. And then the blue computed RMS value is 1 UI peak-to-peak -peak divided by root 2, equal to 0.71 UI RMS. So that's all I'm going to talk to you about today. If anyone would like more information, then please visit the Calnex website at calnexall.com, where there are white papers, app notes, and a jitter poster upon which this presentation is based. And you can request a printed poster to be sent out to you at no charge if you register on the website. Thank you. This short video is on jitter and jitter measurements for next generation networks. This is the second presentation based on the new jitter measurement poster covering ITT standards. The posters available on the Calnex website, www.calnexalt.com. The masks here show the SYNCHE jitter tolerance masks. These are the pass-fail masks for controlled values of jitter applied by the test equipment. There are different
different masks for each sync key rate, and the plotted results must be above the mask. First mask is for 1 gig of Ethernet, covering a frequent range of 10 Hz to 50 kHz, with amplitude starting at 312.5 UI and finishing at 1.5 UI peak to peak at 50 kHz. Second mask is for 10 gig based interfaces, covering 10 Hz to 40 kHz, starting at 2488 UI and finishing at 1.5 UI at 40 kHz. The third and final mask is for 25 gig based interfaces, covering 10 Hz to 100 kHz, starting at 6445 UI and finishing at 3.6 UI peak to peak at 100 kHz. This table shows the output jitter limits for Synkey. Jitter is always measured within a specified bandwidth with the high pass and low pass filters given in column 2. 1 gig jitter is measured up to 10 megs with an equipment limit of 0.5 UI peak to peak and a corresponding network limit of 1.5 UI peak to peak. 10 gig space jitter is measured from 20k to 80 megs, equipment limits 0.5 UI again and the network limits 1.5 UI again. And lastly, but not least, 25 gig jitter is measured to 200 megs, equipment limits 1.2 UI peak to peak and the network limit is 3.6 UI peak to peak. So here are the masks for OTN. As for sync key, there is a pass-fail mask for control jitter applied by test equipment. There are different set of masks for each OTN interface. As for sync key, the plotted results must be above the mask. So there are four masks here. Top left shows the mask for OTU1, 2.7 gigs, covering frequency range up to 2 megs, starting at 15 UI and finishing at 0.15 UI at 2 megs. Second is OTU2, third is OTU3. And the last mask is OTU4, covering a frequency range up to 200 megs, with amplitude starting at 15 UI peak to peak and finishing at 0.15 UI at 200 megs. So I've covered the OTN tolerance mask, we're now go on to OTN jitter generation. This table shows the jitter generation or output jitter limits. Unlike Synkey, OTN has two limits, one measured over a wide bandwidth referred to as wide band jitter, and the other measured over a narrower bandwidth at the higher end of the frequency band referred to as high band jitter. OTU white one jitter at the top here, top row. OTU one jitter is a wide band equipment limit of 0.3 UI peak to peak and a corresponding network limit of 1.5 UI. The high band limit is 0.1 UI peak to peak with a network limit of 0.15 UI peak to peak. Similarly, there's limits for OTU two and OTU three. And lastly, OTU four is a multi lane for many applications. It covers 100 gig LR4 SR4. Uh, it's 25 gig based. Wide band limit of 1.2 UI peak to peak and a network limit of 6 UI peak to peak. The high band limit is covered in IEEE 802.3BA, which is spec for 40 gig and 100 gig of Ethernet. Lastly, come to OTN jitter transfer. J251 masks are shown here for jitter transfer. These are the pass fail masks for control jitter applied by test equipment. The instrument then measures the gain at each point in the mask. Each OTN interface rate is a different transfer mask. Unlike tolerance, the plotted results must be below the mask. The first mask is for OTU1, covers a frequency range up to 250 kHz. The gain must be less than 0.1 dB and the mask rolls off to 20 megs after 250 kHz. The second mask is for OTU2, there's a mask for OTU3 and the last mask is for OTU4 covering a frequency range of 100 kHz to 10 megs with a gain again less than 0.1 dB then from 10 megs it rolls off to 800 megs. So that's all I'm going to cover. If anyone would like more information then please visit the CalNex website at www.calnexall.com where there are white papers, app notes and the jitter poster upon which this presentation is based. You can request a printed poster to be sent to you at no charge if you register on the website. Thank you.